Hey, movie lovers, ever wondered why some old movies are still so popular? Well, let's talk about The Glass Key, a cool movie from 1942 full of secrets and surprises. It's got drama, betrayal, and lots of twists. What do you think makes this movie special and still loved by people today? The answer might surprise you. Do you have any cool memories or stories about watching this movie? Share them below. Keep an eye out for more interesting stuff about movies. And remember, there's always more to discover about The Glass Key. Keep watching. In 1942, The Glass Key hit the silver screen as the second adaptation of Dashiell Hammett's novel, following a previous version in 1935. Some categorize it as film noir, but it leans more toward the style of 1930s gangster films. The story revolves around Ed Beaumont, right-hand man to tough political boss Paul Madvig. Ed finds himself in morally ambiguous territory as he tries to protect his boss and solve a murder implicating Paul. The plot thickens with familial relationships and political intrigue, leading to a series of twists and turns. Alan Ladd portrays Ed Beaumont, a character whose allegiance to Paul Madvig and involvement in the seedy underbelly of politics raise questions about his morality. The dynamics between Ed, Paul, and other characters, including Janet, Paul's daughter, and various gangsters, add layers of complexity to the narrative. As Ed delves deeper into the investigation, he faces moral dilemmas and confronts the darker aspects of his own nature. While the film's exploration of amorality is intriguing, its characters lack the charm necessary to fully engage the audience. Despite Ed's triumph in solving the mystery, his character remains somewhat unlikable, diminishing the overall appeal of the film. Alan Ladd delivers a commendable performance, but the film's characters ultimately fall short in capturing the audience's sympathy. In conclusion, The Glass Key offers a compelling glimpse into the morally gray world of politics and crime, but its character's lack of charm may leave viewers wanting more. Nonetheless, it remains a notable entry in the realm of classic noir cinema. In The Glass Key, when Ed is first seen, he is playing craps and says, Little Joe, brother, that's it, indicating he rolled a pair of twos with the dice, also known as for the hard way in the game's lingo. However, despite studio records and casting call lists listing several actors and their character names like Edward Pale Sr., Al Hill, and Tom Dugan, they did not appear in the movie. James Milliken, who appeared in The Glass Key, had roles in two Best Picture Academy Award winners, You Can't Take It With You, and The Lost Weekend. Additionally, he featured in four other Best Picture nominees, Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, Wake Island, and High Noon. The Glass Key, a 1942 film, stars Maroney Olsen, William Bendix, and Dane Clark. Olsen, known for his roles in Three Musketeers films, appeared in various versions, including the 1935 and 1939 adaptations. Another cast member, William Bendix, gained recognition for his character Chester, a Riley in the Life of Riley, ranking 30 in TV Guide's 50 Greatest TV Dads of All Time. Dane Clark, considered for leading roles in films like The Asphalt Jungle, 99 River Street, The Bridge on the River Kwai, and Picnic, never underwent screen tests for these roles. They brought diverse experiences to the movie. Olsen's ventures into Musketeers films, Bendix's TV accolades, and Clark's potential roles in notable films showcase the depth of talent involved. The film, though not directly influenced by their prior works, benefits from their collective expertise. It adds layers to the narrative, giving audiences a chance to appreciate the varied skills of the cast. In conclusion, The Glass Key stands as a showcase of its cast capabilities, with Olsen, Bendix, and Clark contributing their unique talents to the movie. Alan Ladd, known for his roles in The Glass Key, proposed a television series based on his radio series Box 13 in 1956, but it didn't sell. He portrayed his Box 13 character, Dan Holliday, in an episode of General Electric Theater in 1953. In 1963, he expressed hopes of reuniting with 1940s co-stars like William Bendix and Veronica Lake for a big screen version of Box 13. Kit Gard, during his time at FBO, in the 1920s, often collaborated with Al Cook. They appeared together in comedy series like The Beauty Parlor and Wisecrackers, as well as in features such as Her Father Said No and Legionnaires in Paris. Norma Varden, initially considered for the role of the Mother Superior in The Sound of Music, lost the part to Peggy Wood when producers changed their minds. She then took on the minor role of Frau Schmidt, the Von Trapp's housekeeper. 
The Glass Key, a film from 1942, utilized several set elements from the Holiday Inn house, as production had closed about three weeks earlier. These same elements were later reused in I Married a Witch, another Paramount production released through United Artists. In an interview featured in Tom Weaver's book, They Fought in the Creature Features, Richard Denning shared insights. Alan Ladd, known for his role in The Glass Key, portrayed a prisoner who is keelhauled in Botany Bay, which may be the only instance of a Hollywood leading man undergoing this punishment. The film stands as a testament to the era's filmmaking and is remembered for its contribution to cinema. In The Glass Key, Alan Ladd's acting skills faced skepticism from Dick Cavett, who questioned the film's worth. However, John Houseman defended Ladd, highlighting his expressive eyes and labeling him a marvelous film actor. Houseman's praise contrasted Cavett's doubts, emphasizing the enigmatic quality Ladd brought to the screen. Joseph Kalia, also part of the cast, demonstrated a different talent. A trained singer, Kalia showcased his vocal abilities in the Cadi, where he sang the Tamore alongside Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. This rare capture of his singing voice provided a glimpse into Kalia's multifaceted skills beyond acting. Brian Donlevy, another notable figure in the movie, portrayed historical character William Quantrill in two films, Kansas Raiders and Woman They Almost Lynched. Notably, the latter wasn't a sequel to the former, showcasing Don Levy's versatility in taking on distinct roles in different contexts. In summary, The Glass Key brought together actors with diverse talents. Alan Ladd's subtle acting, Joseph Calais' musical ability, and Brian Donlevy's range as an actor enriched the film with various dimensions, contributing to its overall appeal. In the film The Glass Key, William Bendix, known for his role as Chester Riley on the Life of Riley radio program, faced initial contractual restrictions preventing him from reprising the role on TV. Jackie Gleason temporarily took over the part, but Bendix eventually reclaimed it when the show failed to garner satisfactory ratings. Bendix's takeover resulted in the TV program's success, running for five more seasons. Similarly, Bendix replaced Gleason in the Broadway musical Take Me Along in 1960. Playwright William Saroyan acknowledged Bendix's contribution to the dialogue of the time of your life, which he performed on Broadway. Bendix caught the attention of producer Cheryl Walker in the late 1930s and appeared in six of her productions at the Theatre Guild. The Glass Key, a 1942 movie, is notable for several reasons. First, it marked the second collaboration between Alan Ladd and Veronica Lake, following their successful pairing in this gun for hire. They later starred together in The Blue Dahlia and Saigon. Second, Joseph Calais' involvement in the film is noteworthy, as Orson Welles had admired his stage work for years before they finally collaborated in Touch of Evil. Lastly, Dane Clark, another member of the cast, had a tragic experience during a stage production in 1955 when his co-star Isabel Bonner passed away unexpectedly in his arms. These elements add depth to the history and impact of the glass key.